the What to Read Next podcast helps you build a TBR of future favorite books. In each episode, Lori and Maine interviews authors and book influencers to recommend books they loved for you to pick up today. If you're an avid reader, always looking for your next free read, then the show is Hi, Elizabeth. Welcome to What to Read Next podcast. Hey, Laura. It's good to be here. Thank you. I am so excited to chat with you. So let's chat about how this podcast came about because it's a historic day. And the reason why we came about is because of two days, what happened. So um, last month, there was a leak that the Supreme Court was going to overturn Roe versus Wade. And Roman Slandia, like any other time, we stand together and we make, we save money, we auction things off. And we save it and we put it onto different funds that are matter. And so we had Meet Cute Bookshop, which is a new Romans bookshop bookstore in California, put together an auction and it was for abortion rights. And so Elizabeth won, I donated a spot for the podcast and Elizabeth won the spot. So thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Those podcast spots, they were hot. They were <laughs> hot tickets. <laughs> Jeez. They were no Bridgerton series. Like I believe there was like two or three whole Bridgerton signed Bridgerton sets. Those went for like a couple thousand each, but like dang. <laughs> But the Charm Offensive went to like $3,000, $4,000, the arc for the Charm Offensive. Because I was like, God. and I saw, and Allison was actually traveling, I think, at the time. And so she was like, well, I guess I'll throw, a, like, she, it was like not even a thousand. And she was like, I'll throw a Zoom. And I was like, oh my gosh, you gotta, like, you're gonna feel like, oh my gosh, it's like $3,000 for like an arc, you know? <laughs> so. Oh no, I loved it. I loved seeing it. It was but great. Yeah, but it was the sort of day I was like, I'm so glad I have my day job. <laughs> yeah. So the podcast spots were were a hot quantity. Uh-huh. Like there was a fight between people. We were looking at those fights. I was talking to um, Kelly from the Movies and Newbies because we're both our friends. Mm-hmm. And we're like, who's winning? Who's winning? So <laughs> I was like, we were trying to figure out like, who's doing this like what is going on (laughs) I love that I was thinking to myself I wonder if the podcasters are looking at this and asking themselves like who is going to be the most expensive podcast and does that mean anything at all I don't know I I love auctions though auctions have a really fun atmosphere for me um it, this was no different even if it was yeah. online so I have to tell you because I did not know what you were going to come and talk about so I was <laughs> like and I, I was talking to my friend Brie who has another podcast we're all we have a, a podcast group together we chat about each other stuff and I was telling her I was like I kind of want to do a monster romance you know but I, I don't know who to ask for it and so I don't know. Like, and I, that was two days before it happened. So when you actually brought up, it's like, I actually want to talk about Monster. I was like, it's going out law of attraction. Like, I just manifested this. Right. Holy serendipity. Because, yeah, I was looking at this and the part of me wanted to like give some of these podcasters a warning. Like, I ended up focusing on yours yeah. uh, and just putting my funds towards that. I wanted to give some of them a heads up. Like, so, I actually do blog about monster romance, everyone. <laughs> and I think it's fun. <laughs> well, I would tell you, if you have picked boobies and newbies, they will have gladly have, uh, agree with that too. So Kelly and I, we both are aficionados of like, you know, of spicy, steamy romance. And like, and Kelly does read some, I don't know if she does, she reads alien romance. So it's like a good you know, bridge to monster romance, you know. For sure. There's there's definitely a Venn diagram, I think, going on there. In fact, I'd say more alien romance. I would consider it to be monster romance than not. Mm -hmm. But I have like, I don't know if it's like a basic standard of what makes it a monster romance versus not. Like Mm -hmm. for me, is one of the love interests not human? Mm -hmm. If they are not human then we are in monster romance-ish okay. territory at the very least. Now, I think it can get a little bit uh, interesting. Like, at what point are you kind of copying out with the non-human thing? Like, is all of Sarah J. Mass's books from, like, A Court of All the Things? <laughs> uh, like, is is that monster romance? Because technically, 
<laughs> all those bat boys they are not human <laughs> yeah it's a fairy realm and, and and you can say that for like all like all fairy romances how much of that is monster romance and mm-hmm. is not that is something i would actually love to talk about with other folks about you do a panel i yes. know i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna volunteer as a trivia to host a <laughs> panel about monster romance and i'm gonna help you curate this panel i yeah. would love that I, yeah. I actually have been looking into starting my own podcast eventually. <laughs> yes, I so. think you should. But yeah, I, I, we, we'll chat offline about this. But For sure. we should have like, you know, a whole study about monster romance. You know? but this is like, I, I, don't, I, I don't know, like, so I was telling you earlier, I'm a data person. I do admit when I started getting into this, mm-hmm. there was a part of me that was wondering, was there a point where suddenly monster romance sort of took off? Not to say like all of this took off when I started getting interested in it. It did. It took but, off. Yeah, it took off recently. I would say yeah. 2020 was the year where a lot of shit yeah. went down. Um, right. Much shit went down in 2020, including monster romance. <laughs> monster romance, you know, was like, I think it just like it became a thing. Like I think um CM CM Nicosta's um series was a became popular, then Ruby Dixon became popular on TikTok, um, and then they're like then the orcs became popular. Like you right. start to see like all these like other monsters starting to become popular. Um, I think TikTok helped the situation. A lot of the books were available on Kindle Limited. And so book talkers were just reading Kindle Limited and they're like discovering all these like spicy stuff <laughs> right <laughs> some spicy of it is stuff. definitely spicier than others yes with tiktok yeah. i i don't trust tiktok spicy spicy level because it's like i don't know sometimes they, they think the love hypothesis is too spicy and i'm like i'm sorry but that's only has like one scene like, no. it is so cute my own mother has a spicier sense than that it's so cute <laughs> yeah, yeah. So not not to downplay my own mother. She's a wonderful lady, but she is also Pollyanna incarnate. So, (laughs) oh my gosh. But yeah, and I also appreciate that, yeah, there was a lot of readers. Uh, Amazon has like the great algorithm. So truly, like if you got a Kindle Unlimited subscription, like the world's your oyster or your monster dick really like it's there's so much and plus too with the pandemic so many lives were being tossed around there were those of us like me my world was going nuts and I ended up getting into reading I I forget exactly what happened it was like in a fit of nostalgia I went on to Tumblr and from Tumblr there seems to be a TikTok to Tumblr pipeline (laughs) (laughs) and and of course like people were like I split up barbarians I'm like these look like tieflings of another of another sort (laughs) you know as a shout out to my D&D fans and I was like I freaking love this and of course it was like a perfect setup for like and Ruby Dixon, I believe, started writing these before the pandemic. But yes, you were the, these were fa- these were fabulous. Um, these were popular back in 2016, 2017. I go. heard about them, and I heard because it used to be a hoopla, and so and then they, no, it used to be an Audible ex- for Escape, which is like a, an Audible used to have. I don't know. This is before our times. It was so great. So Audible used to have Audible Escape, which means I have all these Romans audiobooks for free. You pay $7.95 and you can listen to as many audiobooks as possible. It's just like Kindle Unlimited, but just audiobooks for Romans. And oh. so they had so many series. And I think it was like, so I, awesome. I remember a book two where, yeah, they changed it to Audible Plus, which sucks. So, uh, but yeah, so I think it was either Audible Escape or it was Scrib. And like, I remember booktubers talking about Rory Dixon and not being able to ex- access the audiobook they're like I don't understand but I'm like oh they're on Kindle Limited so so she wrote this series like back and like a lot of the series are getting reprinted in mm-hmm. um thanks to book talk our 2015 2016 2017 series so yeah. they've been before- I love that for indie yeah. authors like why not reprint your stuff yes I make money do it <laughs> go make the money yeah. <laughs> I am all for this yeah so but I kind right. of loved with like so the not hoth world mm-hmm. is brutal as hell 
And and you have these women who are abducted. There's awful things that happen to them that are outside of their control. I'm over here like, this feels relatable. I feel ripped from my cozy world and thrown into a hellscape. <laughs> yeah. And I just appreciated that they were making the best of it and having amazing sex at the same time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. With, with rib dicks. <laughs> right. <laughs> Rip for pleasure. <laughs> Eventually for my blog, I'm going to have to finally write my review for Ice Planet Barbarians. I've actually never printed it, but in my head, like, cause I am a lit nerd. Like I'm one of those people, like I went into undergrad and I got an English degree because I'm a book nerd and I got the honors track because it was fun. It's one of those people like in my head, I'm like, this is like the Decameron of our time. And I, I, I desperately now want to like sit down and create like these connections between the Italian Renaissance and what's happening right now in romance Mm -hmm. world Um, just because I'm like there's no such thing as high art and low art there's just art yeah those people (laughs) yes (laughs) all right so talk take us back so I spine over was your your gateway drug what absolutely and then how did you end up going for the other not human you know (laughs) Oh, it was totally the, the Kindle algorithm because they were like, would you like? And it was <laughs> Sam Nascosta with uh, her Morning Glory milking form, which is a great, I think it's novella. It's not a full novel, but it is titillating as hell. The whole premise, this idea of like, it, you know, in the pharmaceutical world of the universe she writes in, Minotaur spunk is like, the main ingredient for their version of Viagra. So you have to have like these special milking farms (laughs) in order to collect the sperm. (laughs) And this main character goes to become a technician for this milking farm and ends up meeting this really hot minotaur. And things go from there. And yeah, it was largely like the Kindle Unlimited algorithm that got me going. And I was also one of those people, I think, um, especially women, it seems uh, as older-ish millennials, those of us born in the 1900s. Yes. I, like, <laughs> there was, the 90s were a weird time, I think, of like pop culture, oper- like moments of non-human love interests. Yes. And I was yes. totally <laughs> one of those girls who was like, yes, I do think the beast is hot from Beauty and the Beast. Yes, please, I want more gargoyles. And of course, like, you're a little kid, you're not really thinking really hard about it. You're just like, I am attracted to this. Don't know why. And I like going with like, you know, Belle's my princess, my Disney princess, because she likes books and so do I. But also like, the Beast is hot, gosh darn it. And he's got a great character arc. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm a sucker for a good character arc. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I see the parallel of the 90s and the <laughs> and now in the 2020s we're just like, we need to escape because we're living a hellhole. We Absolutely. might as well just escape somewhere else. So what really key there, it is an escape. I think I see monster romance as very escape y mm-hmm. just because romance novels in general romance novels in general are just escapism which is great and I think one of the reasons I particularly like monster romance is that the the assumption is we're already in an escapee sort of realm we're just going to get real deep into it like Mm -hmm. go full on completely improbable (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, love to, I point out to my spouse there's no point in getting jealous of any of these book boyfriends because literally you cannot have a double penis so <laughs> yeah <laughs> there is clearly a line between my fantasy world and my real world and I'm totally fine with it <laughs> oh my God.